What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about type aliases. And you've seen type aliases whenever you see the word type followed by some type of user defined word followed by an equal sign and an object symbol. And to people who are not familiar with type checking and TypeScript in general, and type, type aliasing does not actually occur in most type check languages. It's very strange to see. So what does it mean? And let's just give a very real world example of when you would use a type alias and you will get it like in a second because it's not that difficult to understand at all. So let's just say we have a Pokemon here and our Pokemon is an object type. So how would you exactly put type checking on an object type or any type in general? It's a, it's a pretty easy question. If you don't know, I'm just gonna answer it for you though. So let's just say we're gonna go down here and we're gonna have this Pokemon is going to have a type of name and it will also have a um, description and this description will be also be a string too. So if I were to add type checking to this, and I'm just gonna say test, whatever, it doesn't matter. And if I were to add uh, type checking to this, the manual way to do it would to be, just go up here and type name and string. So that's one way to do it. And then I would have to go over to this one as well too. And I would have to type in description is equal to string as well too and whatever i would assign to it would be what i would what i would assign to it but this is not a function keep the, keep that in mind as well too um not a function what we are assigning is just we're just creating an object this is not a function keep that in mind um by the way so you can have this really long type checking up here but that would be very cumbersome and borderline annoying to have to go to every single Pokemon object that I want to instantiate and go up here and have to put all this crap in here. So what I do is I go up here into my type and I declare this, but I just do it within a nice neat little name. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have um, the name is going to equal string and as you notice here too that i am not putting the actual value in here because this is just type checking this isn't going to actually instantiate those values hopefully that makes sense to you so here we're going to go and we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to have description and then we're going to go into here and we're going to do the exact same thing and then once we do that, as you can see that these are the exact same thing, what you can just do is you can go ahead and you can just put that Pokemon type. And that is the whole entire reason behind type aliasing. Okay, so let's go ahead in here and let's have a very simple example. So before I just had a Pokemon value just like this one and I wanted to actually declare this Pokemon object up here and what happened is that I came in here and I noticed that I could actually just go in here and declare all of them but there's no actual type checking involved in this there is just type inference but I want to have actual type checking so what I would do is I'll go up here and I'll just type in type of Pokemon is equal to and then going to have this object right here. And then what I'm going to do in here is go in and give it a name. So I'm gonna go in here, gonna give it a name. And instead of actually putting the, the actual name in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a string. And it could be lowercase, it could be uppercase, whichever one that you wanna do. I'm gonna go ahead and do lowercase. And then right here, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna have a description and it's going to be of type string. And let me make sure that I spelled description wrong. Looks like I did. So I could come in here and I could do the exact same thing. I could put literally these variables inside of here and I could go string is equal to Teddy. And if you look, or this is actually supposed to be equal to a string because it's type checking, it's not actually 
and that if you see there that red line goes away but what if i come in here and i want to add another one so i would say description and i'm going to just put test just like i did in the previous example and if you look here it's because this is not an actual this is not actually defined within the type checking we actually have to go into here and we have to add this so we're going to go description is equal to type string but as you can imagine this would get very cumbersome so what i do is i go in here and i just type in pokemon just like that the type checking works and we've successfully implemented type checking now let's talk about the differences between an interface and type aliasing truth be told they're actually incredibly similar but here are the differences between them so number one you can combine type aliases um, if you wanted to go into here and you wanted to say just have just some random variable and you wanted to have this is equal to type and um, some other type, so point in points. So if you wanted to have different ones and you wanted to combine them, you could do that as well too. You also, um, you merge interfaces. So the same exact thing applies here. So you can't merge interfaces or you can't, you merge interfaces, you can't merge type aliases, but with interfaces, we have this thing called merging. And what you would do then is they would have the exact same name and they would just be literally, they would just combine themselves automatically when you compile. Um, the also the other difference is you cannot declare a union an intersection or a tuple within an interface. And number the last one, um, classes can implement both, but they cannot union. You cannot have a, class that implements one with or a type alias with a union type anyway i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to hit that like button make sure to hit that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching